Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. Uh, there are three equations that can be used to solve many physics problems in motion. I like to call these equations the uh, three amigos, but they're better known as the three kinematic equations. Uh, kinematics is the study of motion. So here, here we go. Let's just go over them briefly and I'll show you three ways that uh, they can be used. Uh, if you take your final velocity equal to the, your initial velocity, and you add that to your acceleration and your time, uh, that's one of, one of the equations, or amigo number one. Uh, again, when you're working with physics problems, you have to make sure that you know the symbols and their matching units. So, of course, for speed, we got meters per second. Acceleration is meters per second squared. And t time is seconds in physics. Our second amigo says that d is equal to the initial velocity times time. And we actually probably should use parentheses here to make sure we don't make any calculator mistakes. And then you add that to one half the acceleration times the time squared. Uh, we've gone over the other units, but we, here, let's go over distance. Distance is meters in physics. And our last amigo here is says that if you square the final speed and you subtract the initial speed from it, that is equal to twice the acceleration times the distance. So again, all the units are, are the same here. No new symbols there. All right, so let's go over um, how we can use these equations uh, in different situations. Here's one example. If you want to calculate how fast an object is moving if dropped from rest, uh, we start with amigo number one, I guess. We'll call them that. VF uh, equals the initial speed plus acceleration times time. And then you, understanding the concept of free fall, um, your initial speed for free fall, you know, the object starts from rest, so that means your VI is zero. So you would substitute zero there. And we know things fall due to the acceleration due to gravity, so A just becomes G for gravity. On Earth, we know it's 9.8 meters per second squared, approximately. So if you want to calculate how fast the object is moving at any given time, your speed is just going to be equal to gravity times the uh, length of time that it has fallen. Example number two, using our, the second amigo we described earlier, uh, to calculate how long an object uh, launched horizontally will stay in the air, uh, we'll just substitute and derive the equation to figure out how long it actually stayed in the air. So here's a diagram here. And we'll use y as our script subscript for the y direction. So we'll say dy is equal to dy initially times t plus 1 half at squared. So again, knowing the concepts, we know that the initial speed will be 0. And we're left with dy equals to 1 half. And acceleration, again, just like in free fall, is, is gravity. So we can substitute that there. And so we end up with dy equals 1 half gt squared. Using our algebra skills, we'd end up with the equation t equals to the square root of d, 2dy divided by g. And so a useful equation to figure out how long something stays in the air. All right, in our last example, uh, if you want to calculate the maximum height an object going straight in the air will travel, and here's a diagram to help you see uh, the vectors involved. We know velocity is a vector, so initially going up, we got positive, coming down is negative. I will get uh, more tutorials on each one of these examples so you, so you can see them better. But in this tutorial, we just, I just want to basically go over the, again, the three amigos or the three kinematic equations. So we've used the, the third amigo uh, here to do this one. We have VF squared minus VI squared equals 2AD. So if you look at the diagram here, uh, the final velocity up here needs to be zero. If not, the object keeps going up forever and ever and ever. So we, we know it's zero for a split second here. So we got zero. And we're left with, uh, again, we're going to substitute uh, g for, for the acceleration. Gravity is what's pulling the object back down. And again, using your algebra skills, we can derive an equation to figure out the distance here, uh, the maximum height that it travels. Turns out it'd be minus vi squared, your initial speed squared, divided by 2ag. And again, since these are vectors, we, we have to use negative for gravity, because gravity always acts down. And then our vi would be positive, so we'd end up with a negative and negative 
And so in the end, the distance would be a positive. So this tutorial um, is part of, a, of my book called My First Physics Book of Motion. It's a 153-page book that's designed for uh, students new to physics um, from high school to collegiate level. Uh, it makes sure that you uh, learn the fundamentals and terminology units as problem solving uh, and problem solving skills. So you show two different methods there uh, for solving problems. Uh, the study guide takes a hands-on approach has many interactive tables, worksheets, and mini quizzes. And then, of course, uh, you see how this is referenced uh, to the book. It's available at starstudyguide.com or straight at, at amazon.com. I guess typing these keywords would help you find it. But if you go to starstudy.com, so the two ways there, you can link to Amazon. Uh, if you think you want to see more about the book, 